Thanks for giving me opportunity. In this paper, I am trying to talk about this uh, external racking attack mitigation using positional protein. And this paper is co-authored by Balaji Rajendra, Gindu Madhava sir and Dr. N. Sarachan Bhav, who is the executive director of CDAC. Now, what do you know already the digital signatures? Similarly, suppose we, we are uh, doing XML transaction, then we require certain kind of uh, signature, and those signatures are generally called XML signatures. And the standard for XML signature is defined by W3C and IETF. And you are already given in this particular slide where we can find out the schema of a digital signature. And XML signature is a kind of digital signature which is basically more tailored to the XML transactions. And this XML signature is designed in such a way that instead of signing the whole XML uh, document, we can sign a portion of documents also. Then how to identify those portion of documents? Those are generally identified by identifier. Identifier is a, one kind of attribute in the XML, which, are, which is unique in the XML document. Using that, we can identify the elements. Then, this is a schematic of XML signature. Suppose we are going to sign an XML document. Then, as per the specification, a signature element will be added or appended to the XML document which is going to be signed. And a specification for this particular XML document is defined by that W3C. <coughs> Basically, there are three kind of uh, uh, signatures. One is called envel enveloping, another is called envelop, and another is called detached. And basic difference between these three that how this signature element is appended. Mostly, we, we use uh, this envelop uh, kind of digital signature where the digital signature element will get appended to the XML. Uh, descendant of the XML document, uh, descendant in the XML document. Then, basically, if you see the uh, SK, this particular uh, element which is going to be appended, in this, uh, basically, there are a signature element, and inside the signature element, one another element is there which is a signed info, and then one can canonicalization method is there, another tag, and then another node is there, signature method, and further, you have a references. And then this references has certain kind of transform, and then further uh, uh, the algorithm which is used for calculating digest and further actually actually the digest value. And then we have a signature value, and then uh, another tag which will keep the digital public key of the signer. Then the as for the standard. Basically, these are the three elements inside the signature, sign info, signature value, and key info. Suppose we have an XML document and we have to sign the certain elements, and those elements will be identified by ID. Then, basically, the digital signature generation algorithm tries to find out the elements, which is referenced by ID, then it tries to calculate the digest of that element with the given algorithm here, digest method, and then it creates a reference element inside the sign info and attach it. Suppose we have a three element to be signed, then we inside the sign info we will have a three references which will contain the digest value of the element which is getting signed. Then, then suppose we have an XML document, the elements which are going to be signed are identified by ID, get the digest, create the reference, put into the sign info. Once sign info is created, then as per the algorithm, a digest of sign info is created and then it is signed by the private key and it is kept inside the signature value. And a public key of the signer is also kept in this act for this specification and is sent to the receiver. Then how to verify the digital signature? This is how 
digital signature generation algorithm is there and this is how to verify once we have received this document and this document first step is that the receiver will again take the sign info digest and then with the public key this sign value sign value is there here this sign value digest will be decrypted and tried to match if the, the calculated sign info is matched with the digest which is coming from the uh, sender side if both the matches means no tampering has happened at least in the sign info then further again it calculates the reference uh, uh, the elements which uh, which were actually signed again this digest will be compared with the digest which is coming from the sender this digest will be here in digest value which is calculated by the sender and if at, at this point of time if all such digests are matched for the all the signed elements then this signature verification algorithm is called means is termed successful then doing this way what happens as we know a web service web service is a remote service which is accessible over the open protocol before and this is a, this is Mm, this is uh, this happens because of a protocol which is called a SOAP protocol and some other standards are there like WSDL and MDDI. This because of that we can call the web service through another platform and, and through another language. And as we know, these web services are very heavily used for the financial transactions because like you have if uh, another uh, service has to call a payment gateway for doing a tra transaction. If a, a service wants to call uh, some another e-government services at that point of time web services are called. Then suddenly this web services involves very valuable information and if this, uh, this transaction of very valuable information and if such things are there, suddenly certain kind of malicious areas are there. Then it has found that the actual signature actually identifies the elements which is getting signed using the ID and because of this what happens the XML can be repeated means the signed element can be moved across the inside the document and still it retains the ability to verify the signature and this creates the different kind of uh, uh, writing attacks which are called rewriting attacks also and in this uh, this uh, idea of researcher like this Michael and Mike Tross and Paul Austell has written this paper and this paper he has shown that even with the existence of all the W3C security state still such kind of attacks are possible what he did he tried to safeguard all the XML with all the kind of WS security state and at the same time he, he also found how to attack with how, how to attack those XML document with the XML wrapping it. In this uh, this is the actual SOAP request. We have signed element is identified by this particular identifier. And in this case we see a Old soap request, and if you see the the sign, the element which was being signed is moved inside the header of the soap. Then what happens at the time the signature verification happens? It refers that uh, element and it finds inside the header. What happens? The signature vali uh, validation happens because the elements are just moved inside the hierarchy inside the header, and at the time of application processing logic. The application logic actually takes ele uh, the elements at the time of application, it consumes this particular body element. That's why what happens, this is called a wrapping attacks. This is possible because the elements are referred by the ID and ID can be moved. The element can be moved across the action. In this article, uh, I want to show a uh, uh, SOAP request. You see here, there are two elements which are going to be signed, this one and this one. And these are the signed in for references. Internet will contain the value here inside this. And this is a full document. <coughs> what happens? This element, I have just jumbled it here. Both these elements are jumbled it. Both the uh, 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 messages are actually different, but still it verifies with the signature. Then what we did, we tried to uh, solve this particular uh, XML wrapping attack, and what I did here, we introduced a concept of positional token and I can because XPath fixes the both horizontal axis and vertical axis very perfectly. That's why I took this XPath as a XPath as a positional token. 
And what I did at the time of uh, signing, suppose this element is going to be signed, I have suggested to add this positional token to the element which is getting signed. <coughs> then what happens? The element which is getting signed, it has a traces of the element as well as the traces of the its position as well. In this case, this is the suggested algorithm. In this case, Yeah. In this, uh, see, this is another scenario one. And instead of earlier uh, here, it was ID. Now it is containing a X path. And now, if a person is trying to move the body over here, but this will still refer to this point. And since body is not there, like this X path says, envelope header body inside attribute should be ID. At this point, body is not there. In this case, signature verification will not happen and it will say that it is unsuccessful. Also this is the scenario in the <coughs> suppose he is changing the URI itself like he is trying to uh, change the URI and now it, it will try to get this element and it will create the digest of this but it will not match the digest which is coming from the sender. In this case also the signature verification will not happen with the career, uh, suggested algorithm. Similarly some other scenarios are there because of the time scarcity I am leaving it. Means what I found that just adding this X path instead of ID in, inside the current XML sp signature specification it solves the XML wrapping attacks very elegantly. Thanks. Then uh, any questions for him? So good that uh, you have thrown some lights on the XML based signature, but the attacks which you have mentioned, how they will be uh, deployed or how you will put to counter them possibly, uh, I think that maybe the time is not there for deeper understanding. Maybe a paper is coming in that, some interested people, because this is one of the very important uh, work where uh, the XML based messages are predominantly will go to float in the business workflows and thereby making lot of importance in the workflow applications, PK enabled workflow applications. So possibly the attacks in case if they are already there, the mitigation.